Hashes are a way of avoiding storing a password in plain text, and the first step to attacking or brute forcing them is to identify it correctly. Today, we'll explore a tool that can identify hashes on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Hashes are a way of storing information, and in most cases, passwords and other sensitive information will be stored like this so we can avoid actually saving the passwords in plain text. Now, this is a good idea because if your database is stolen, then it means all of your users' passwords haven't been compromised. But for an attacker, the first step to actually doing that is to identify this correctly, and that's what we're going to get into today. Now, the first step is to actually understand what a hash is. And in brief, a hash is a non-retrievable way of storing information, unlike encryption, in which you're basically just taking the data and making it so you can reverse the encryption and get all of it back. A hash can be brute forced, but really it's a one-way mathematical function, which takes a little chunk of a file and bit by bit runs it through a algorithm, which outputs a very large number, which will change if a single byte of the file is modified. This is a great way for making sure that a file has been changed after it's been uploaded for download. And oftentimes, the author will publish a hash in order to make sure you can compare it and verify that nothing has been changed before installing it on your computer. Now today, we're going to use a tool written in Python, which will allow us to be able to easily identify what type of hash we're working with. Now, if we've maybe come into a list of different hashes and we need to know where to start, this is an amazing tool for making sure that we're not wasting our time trying to brute force the wrong hash when it simply won't work in Hashcat or some other brute forcing tool. Now, in order to make this work, we'll need a computer with Python installed, but it's cross-platform, so that should work on just about anything. If you get confused, you can also check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description because it's there for you if you need some troubleshooting. Once you have a computer with Python 3 set up and ready to begin, then we can start. Today, we're going to be looking at a tool called Hash Identifier, which is a way where if we discover a hash and we want to use a tool like Hashcat against it, we can avoid wasting time by maybe guessing the wrong hash and using the wrong mode in Hashcat. Now, Hashcat has a lot of different available modes, and in general, when you're going to run it, you need to know that mode before it's very effective. If I look at man Hashcat, there are a ton of different modes, and the tack M, uh, or the hash type variable, is really the most important thing when you're going to be doing this because it specifies all the different, uh, which one of all the different hashes that it is going after. So I'm going to briefly, here we go, scroll through the list of different hashes that are crackable in Hashcat, and you'll, you can see there are quite a lot of them. But identifying the difference between a couple of these and knowing which of these codes to use might be pretty confusing to a beginner, especially if you just find a hash and you're looking to reverse it, or even if you're trying to download some software and then you're provided with a checksum, but they never tell you what hash they used. Now, there might be some pretty common ones, but if somebody's using an uncommon hash to verify their download, then you can be a little bit left uh, in the dark as to what to actually use to verify that. So hash identifier isn't just for using with Hashcat, it's also really helpful if you're trying to figure out what kind of hash someone is using to verify a piece of software that you're downloading from them. All right, so to make this happen, we first need to go to GitHub and after navigating to blacksploit slash hash dash identifier, we can click on clone or download and copy this address right here. If we scroll down, we can see a big long list of all the hashes they can identify, which is super useful and cool for anybody who's interested in hashes and how they work. So I'm going to quit out of this. And I have a Ubuntu computer right here that I'm SSH into that has Hashcat installed. And I have my macOS computer here where I'm going to be using Hash Identifier. But to install it for you uh, on any system that has Python, you can type git clone. And then the address we copied from GitHub. And here it will not download because I've already installed it. But for you, it'll go ahead and download and install all the various packages and stuff that you'll need for it. So I'll type cd, uh, which is change directory, and then hash identifier. And if I type ls, I can see hash-id.py. 
So I'm going to type sudo python3 uh, and then hash id.py. And after I enter my password, we should be ready to go and start identifying some hashes. All right, so on my Ubuntu system, I have a couple of different hashes. Oops, let's do. Uh, and I can see I have these unknown hashes where if I type cat unknown one dot text, I can see we have this big long hash and I have no idea what kind of hash this is or how I would go about cracking it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and paste it into our hash identifier. And after running it, I can see that there are two different results, one of which is more unusual and I'll pay more attention to. So SHA-512 uh, is a hash that's generalized into a bunch of different other things. And Whirlpool is a more unusual result because I often kind of see the SHA-512 uh, as a, um, I guess, a, a uh, misidentified hash or one that's like very similar to one that we're looking to identify. So assuming that this is Whirlpool, the mode of hashcat for Whirlpool is 6100. So I go ahead and just save my hashcat command here so I don't forget it. Oops. And the command we'll be using is sudo hashcat tack m for mode, and then in this case, 6100. And then our output file will be something with null byte uh, in the title, just so we can keep track of it. Our source file will be unknown. Let's do unknown one. And then our example dictionary will just be example.dict, but this can be really anything that you want to use as a word list. It could be rocku.txt or any, any password list you have. Now I also have to run tac tac force because I'm using a system that isn't well supported uh, and otherwise I'll get a bunch of error messages, but let's modify this a little bit. So we'll be using unknown one. Uh, that's the hash that we just checked. We'll be making a file called null byte one and the mode that we're going to be using is 6100. Now I'm using again, a password list where the, uh, the password is on here eventually. So when I run it, I'll type in my password. And we see all hashes found in pop file. If I type ls, then let's see, let's run this again. And it says ta add tag tag show to display them. All right, there we go. And then we have null byte one dot text. Mm, pseudo cat. There we go. So after crunching the numbers, we were able to see that knowing the mode that we were going after, this is a Whirlpool hash of the word hashcat. Very cool. All right, let's try it with one more just to see how this works. If I type ls again, we'll go ahead and pick, let's say unknown five. So unknown five, oops, cat unknown five is this slightly shorter hash. Let's go ahead and copy it into hash identifier and see if we can figure out what it is. So according to this, it is SHA-1. Um, and this looks a little bit complicated. I'm not sure if it's a SHA-1 uh, with embedded SHA-1, SHA the password. I'm gonna just assume that it's a SHA-1 and see if we can get that using the SHA-1 hash code of 100. So going back to our hashcat command, I'm going to run sudo hashcat. I'm gonna change the mode of the attack to 100 rather than 6100. I'm going to do tack A for a straight attack. And then I'm going to do tack O for the output file as null byte two. The uh, actual hash we're gonna be using is unknown five. And we're going to be using the same example dictionary. So I'm going to get rid of the show command unless I need it because I found that this can cause problems in huh, other takes of this video. And this is what you'll see typically when you're running Hashcat for the first time. It'll need to uh, build something if you're not well supported. As you can see, I don't have a good version of OpenCL on this. And it'll go through and crack through all the various possibilities in the list until it finds a correct one. 
Now you can see that the guest queue, it recovered one of one. So 100% success, that's what we wanna see. The hash type was SHA1 and the status is cracked. So let's type ls and we can see null byte two. So I'll type cat null byte two dot text, uh, pseudo cat null byte two dot text. And there we go. We have our hash and then the decrypted version, well not decrypted, the cracked version, which is just the word hashcat. Now, as an example, I won't actually uh, go through and crack the rest of these, but just so you can see how it works, I can do cat unknown two and see another hash, run it through the hash identifier. And this one is identified very similarly as uh, SHA-1 or MySQL-5, which could mean that this is actually a MySQL-5 one, whereas the other one would maybe have possibly failed using a different code. If we wanna see what maybe, oops, if we want to see what our final one looks like, that's going to be unknown four. We can take this last hash, drop it in the hash identifier, and see that it comes up as a SHA-256. Could also be a Haval-256, but I believe that would probably be based on SHA-256 and maybe for a specific application. So you can see how this is incredibly useful and simple to just take any random hash that you have never seen before and quickly identify the type of algorithm used to create it. This is great for, again, anyone from people looking to download and make sure that their file is secure and the one that they intended to download, or somebody who found a big long list of hash passwords and want to get started with a tool like Hashcat actually cracking them. Using hash identifier, it's easy for a penetration tester to take a hash they've discovered and quickly identify the best algorithm for attacking it. Now, this is a big leap forward for anyone who's just groping around in the dark trying to find out what this number is and avoids having to use a Google search or something else to locate a tool to find it. Now, in general, this techni technique is most useful when you have a hash that you're not quite sure about and you need to compare it to quickly identify whether it's something critical like a stored password, or maybe not so critical like the hash to verify a download that's long since been deleted. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.